All right, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. Today we are in Salmon. We have a load of gravel we're going to take down to Idaho Falls. So we went ahead and busted out the old Project 3XX from Half Fast Gaming. Haven't uh, taken this thing for a spin in a while, but there is a very good reason why we're using this truck today. We are going to be featuring a new engine today. This uh, came out in, a, in an update for uh, Steel Productions engine pack. This is a CAT 3306, uh, specifically a 1980 version. It comes in a couple different horsepowers. This one happens to be a 350 horsepower. I think there's a 245, um, I want to say a 300 or a 320, and then they have the highest one is 350. So we are going to be using that today. Obviously with Project 3XX weight is not simulated in the uh, the dump on the on the truck itself. We only have the weight in that back trailer. Um, so you can get this from Half-Fast Gaming's uh, Patreon. And when you get the truck you can also get the add-on trailer made by Diesel. D-E-E-Z-L-E. -E -E. I'll have links down in the description below. But really cool uh, combination. This is a Pete 357, and because uh, there's different Peter builds within Project 3XX, and kind of the main reason why I wanted to run this is because of that Cat 3306. As you know, whenever I put in try out a new transmission, a new engine, anything like that, I like to try to keep it with a truck that it may have been in, uh, maybe not necessarily a Peter built 357 but it was a good excuse to bring the uh, Project 3XX back in after a while. The reason is the Cat 3306, if you do a little bit of research on it, you find it in a lot of rigid body trucks. So that's going to be a dump truck, a cement truck, um, some sort of box, anything that's on the actual chassis of the truck itself. And that's kind of why I wanted to uh, bring this truck into it. Um, before we get it started and we take this haul of, what is it, 26,000 pounds of gravel from, Sav from Salmon to Idaho Falls, I just kind of wanted to give you a quick little update. I got my first, I guess, button programmed. I am, I'll attempt to show you right now in the uh, camera in the lower right hand corner. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I am using a... Uh, zero delay well i don't think it's actually branded zero delay but it is an arcade usb encoder and i have my first setup going this is the ignition came with a couple keys and it is all rigged up and finally got it working there is a link to a video that did a tutorial um, all i have to say is if you have one of these usb encoders check to see when you because you can only plug these little uh, JST uh, ends into the plug in one direction and into the encoder okay you can only do it one direction make sure that you pay attention which wire blue or white is on the inside and which one is on the outside uh, I went through the entire tutorial of a guy who also had blue and white wires and mine were backwards and I hooked it up and I couldn't get it to work and it turns out his blue is colored with my white and vice versa. So once I made that correction, I was able to connect it correctly and get it all working. And I'm going to show you how we're going to start up this truck right now. Let's take it out of gear. So we get the, we do have uh, accessories if we go backwards. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Do I need to angle it a certain way? All right, so let's go backwards and you'll see all the accessories come on. And I'm just gonna go backwards again, turn them off. But then we have the accessories, the ignition, if we go one click forward. And then this one actually has a spring built into it, so I'm going to, yeah, you guys can still see that okay. So I am going to spring it forward, let go, and she should start. Let's check it out. And it springs all the way back to that previous position. And so got the got the ignition working okay. That one's probably going to be the hardest. Uh, the rest of the buttons are, it's a little slow going. I did have an issue with one of, the, uh, one of the buttons not working. And I think it's because it's actually a, uh, 
It's a toggle switch. No, it isn't a toggle switch. It's a rocker switch, but I think I have the wrong one. I wanted to get an on off on so it has two positions up and down, but apparently I wasn't paying attention enough and this uh, rocker switch that I have, instead of it being a momentary on off on, it is a momentary on off, momentary on. I don't understand the difference between those. I've tried to look it up. I don't know what the actual usage of a momentary on off, momentary on is versus an on off on, but it's not, I've tried it like three different ways according to uh, some tutorials and some help for, from some friends on Discord. And uh, thank you, Dan, for that, by the way. And uh, I can't seem to get it quite right. The only thing that I can figure is I have the wrong type of rocker switch. So I'm kind of looking for a new one. And the rest of them, I can get them done with just some basic buttons and toggle switches. And I'm just being picky because I am in, indecisive pretty much. Um, but yeah, that's the situation. Got the first one wired. And I am going to have it over here on the left side eventually. And all of this flight gear stuff is going to be gone and replaced with all my buttons. But that's the first one. I wanted to show you how it worked. And if you're curious, take a look at the link down below to see the tutorial. Again, just watch which way are those wires. Blue on the inside or white on the inside and stack it up accordingly, um, according to the uh, instructions that he gives you. That's my little bit of advice. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get down to Idaho Falls here. We are rocking a 15 speed. I'm actually gonna start out in deep reduction, splitter forward. This is uh, Fury 6 is 15 speed. Get our four ways on there. We're pulling out of here. It probably lift that uh, that lift axle on the truck, since we're only at about twenty six thousand pounds. And well, to be honest with you, there is no weight simulated on that uh, that dump that's attached to the truck anyway. All right, let's let's actually uh, drive this thing here. Actually, pretty accurate to a uh, 3306, according to what I've heard on uh, from trucks on YouTube. I'm not a truck driver at all, but it is pretty cool for sure. Let's get her out of deep reduction. And again. If you're in deep reduction, subtract one gear, and that's going to be your highway gear that you go to next. That slowed down real fast. I'm just going to shut my mouth for a bit, let you hear this 3306. get on the pavement again here looks like about a four-hour drive to Idaho Falls and if you guys notice the uh, Last time I was driving a 15 speed, I think it was the last video or the video just before that, I was using the U shape pattern. I'm using the H pattern, typical, where you go from fourth on top and then fifth. I gotta, this view is really kind of bugging me. Yeah. Maybe I, did, my track IR, maybe I didn't reset that. I wonder if I can do that now. 
yeah, I needed to reset it. It was getting all, all wonky on me. Sometimes that just happens. So, I hope you guys are having a good week. If you're watching this on Thursday when I released it, you're almost at the end of the week. Pretty cool. I uh, wanted to ask you guys, are you guys excited about 1.5 coming pretty soon? Headlight usage. Give me a break. Are headlights on? Nope. There we go. Oh, turn here? No. Yeah, I haven't even thought about it. I've been so busy. Um, either a combination of, you know, all the buttons and dealing with the dashboard, but also work. I haven't even thought about it. I know that there are quite a few people that are, um, quite a few developers that are working their way to start rebuilding everything. Um, like Pister, I believe he should have just about all of his stuff updated to 1.5 now. Um, so that when 1.5 goes live for everyone, everything will be good. And I know that right now, who else was it? Uh, Jasper's Wheels, he's in the process of getting those compliant with 1.5. Of course, whenever you go to... Um, whenever you get a bigger update, which isn't like 1.49.67, you know, you go to a whole number, then there's going to be a little bit of issues. Obviously, guys, just be patient with it. Developers are doing what they can to get it going as fast as possible. And a lot of people are giving them, giving them hell about it. And, but they'll get it done. That means you can't use a certain truck or trailer for a little bit. Don't worry about it. Not the end of the world. These guys are, these guys are doing a whole lot to keep us driving our favorite trucks and our favorite trailers and engines and all that good stuff so we're barely pulling up on 30 here first time we get a, a straight to build up some speed though we're not going to be going too fast here um, also the initial gear is 16.9. It is meant more for torque, for high torque, and the rears are 4.11. So we weren't we aren't built for speed anyway, but we only have a 350 horsepower engine in it, and that's probably very similar to what it would have been like for people driving this engine. I'm digging this Cat 3306. There's the Jake on her. We get her settled down. 35 on the curve. This was obviously the uh, precursor, as I understand it, to the 3406. I can hear a little bit of 3406 in there. A little bit of the, or should you say, you could hear a little bit of 3306 in the 3406 since it came first. about as good of a job we can to keep that that dump trailer out of the other lane there but this is this seems like a pretty perfect perfect uh, route here keeping it around 35 and 40 which is going to be probably about 5 10 miles an hour slower than my top speed in this again not engine and transmission not built for speed here but I like I like running these older engines that, you know, you go back 30, 40 years, whatever, and that's the horsepower that they had at the time. That was realistic. And, I mean, yeah, you can get in your 389, get in your W900 with your 600, your 800 horsepower. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one thing. But getting these more classic engines at their more accurate horsepowers gives you a little bit more of a challenge you really do have to think especially when hills are coming up 
you know, what's your load like? How long are you? Can you get away with pulling out into traffic like you normally would? Or is it going to take you an extra bit of time? Also, what I really like about it is you don't really have to pay a whole lot of attention to your transmission and differential and all of that stuff if you just throw in a 600 or 800 horsepower that's going to help you 95 percent of the time but when you get down to these uh, like like the Cummins NH engines and this 3306 engines like that where you have to try to milk every single bit of horsepower and you have to strategize with your transmission and you have to say look I know I want a 3.5 differential and that's great for over the road but you know I'm not gonna get it done if I'm hauling anything higher than 40,000 pounds with a 300 horsepower engine you really have to change your transmission to get get what you can out of it and just admit just like in real life you're not going to be rolling down the road 60 miles an hour all the time. I'm, you know, foot foot to the floor here, going 30. Got a little bit of an uphill. I'm going to keep it in, obviously. I'm looking at that tack, though, I'm kind of sitting around 1,400 horsepower, or 1,400 RPM. And I'm thinking, man, maybe I should go, into, go down to 8th. Maybe I'm going to right now. Especially since we got 30 around this corner anyway. But yeah, it's just kind of fun being able to tweak that uh, that transmission uh, to go hand in hand with the engine. A little bit more challenging and more realistic. I like it. And thank you to David Steele for coming out with this 3306. I believe it's the only 3306 in the game. Only one I've seen anyway. I've been playing this for a couple years now. Let me know down below if you see another one. But thanks David. Enjoying it. Oh, we actually have to let off the gas a little bit here. Oh, there we go. 45 miles an hour. Yeah, that should take us another 10 minutes to get up to that. And I do mean 10 minutes real time, not game time. I kind of like these drives more than the the big city highway drives where you really have to plan ahead with what you're doing, watch your speed, um, a lot of curves, and a lot of beautiful scenery. This is, uh, I believe, I have to double check, I believe I'm running PNG in this. If I'm not running PNG, then I'm probably running... Uh, probably running a, a spring graphics since that's kind of what we're doing right now in real life at least uh, on the, the northern part of the earth in the northern hemisphere yeah I just love these roads being able to negotiate it you have enough power, you're going into a downhill, you need to back off a little bit, and if you do, how much time is it going to take you to get back uh, when you don't have the strongest engine? I like the strategy. Keeps it interesting. And we're going a little bit slower because we're doing these curves. I think we could probably get up to 50, maybe 55 if we had a straight and a slight downhill, let's be honest. Noticing big changes in the speed just when we go up these small little hills. These are these are really little mini hills. Ooh, we do have to back off here. You know what? I got 42, 43 miles an hour. I'm gonna I'm not slowing down to 40 because we're going uphill. going to keep this momentum going. I am already going to have to move down to ninth. Really pushing this 3306. But the 3306 was a workhorse. It's a good engine until it was replaced. I'm 
might take me a little bit of time, but I got the torque for it, so I'm not worried about getting stuck on a hill. Also, with these five deep reduction gears, no chance I'm getting stuck. It just might be a five mile an hour clog uphill in some certain circumstances. Hey, I think this is a uh, Matt BT yard over here. Oh, there's a sign for it. Yep, where are we going through? Mac A. No, nope, we're not quite to Mac A. Knew that, I knew that looked familiar. That's a cool little yard there. Got stuck on it the first time. Um, and it was my own fault because I thought that one road was going to lead to another parking spot and it turned out because I was looking at it over hedge flying around and it turns out there's like probably an 8 to 10 foot drop going down to the road so I got stuck on it and uh, I happened to have at the time I didn't record this one but I happened to have a double trailer and probably took me about 20 minutes to figure out how to back up I'm not going to put you guys through anything like that but really screwed up on that one Oh, and down to 35. Took us a half an hour to get up to that speed. And down to 25. Good looking truck. Good looking truck. Lots of customization with this Project 3XX. Lots of different trucks and obviously, like I said, the add-on. And this isn't the only add-on trailer, too. You can do a logging trailer, you can do a flatbed, you can do a tanker. It's all on his Patreon. Support the guy, he's doing some good work. And you get a decent number of trucks and trailers out of it. And that's only just the Project 3XX. He's got other stuff, too. Just got a metallic green paint job on here. Nothing fancy or anything, nothing branded. Just rolling with good old Freebeard colors. Oh, 55. 55. Let's do it. Oh, that's what that. Okay. I thought I had that view taken out. Let's punch it. See if we can get up to 50. We got an hour and 18 minutes left. See if we can do it. In the meantime, I'm just going to kind of show you some exterior stuff. And we'll catch up with you on the, uh, on the other side. Alright, we're about 15 minutes away now. Just about pulling into Idaho Falls. Uh, pretty uneventful. Uh, I did get up to 54 miles an hour on the downhill. I got up to 52 was max in 10th gear. Wouldn't let me go any farther on a straight, on flat ground, or relatively flat ground. And then I got down a little bit of uh, downhill, got up to 54. That was my top speed, and that was a 70 mile an hour road. Probably should have had my flashers on the whole time, because I wasn't going anywhere near the speed limit. Yeah, 35 miles an hour. That's kind of kind of my speed for this drive. Not bad. But yeah, we're just about just about getting there with this gravel. Delivering it to Lenar. Got a job site. As far as I understand, I think Lenar, they have job sites and then they have like like little yards where they keep all their equipment. Oh, come on, man. You saw me coming. You saw me coming. Just like real life. 
for those of you uh, real life truckers, past or present, is that normal? Because I know it's normal for cars to cut off trucks. They don't want to get behind trucks. But do trucks, do you guys do it to yourselves? Do trucks kind of cut, cut off other trucks? I would like to think it's kind of a community, but is that realistic, what that guy just did? This is PNG graphics. I think I'm running a spring spring mod. I gotta double check that. If it's PNG, I'll have it down in the description. so we don't have to go out too wide. All right, we are pulling in. I think I got a beacon on here. Is it on? Nah, it's hard to see during the day, but there is a beacon. Really don't have to go, don't have to take this too wide at all. It follows pretty well. get out and see where they want me to drop this. I'll be right back. Ooh, I haven't done one of these in a while. We're just up there on the left, to the left of that building. Let's go ahead and get some low gears, some deep reduction, so we can have more precision, more control. I'm going to try something I haven't tried before. No, I'm not going to try that. Am I kidding? How am I going to back this in? I have no idea how I'm going to back this in with a double. Yeah, I should probably take that skip. Shouldn't have to go too wide here. Follows pretty good. So we're just up here on the left. And obviously, this is a situation where you're, we're going to have to back. Go over that rock a little bit. Just trying to cheat a little bit so I don't have to do some crazy, too crazy maneuvering. Because... I'm not that good at it, not with a double. Actually, is this one of those that turns normally? I gotta check this out. Hit the horn. Maybe this just backs up normally. I think it does. Ah, we're good then. And that, tra that trailer's got steering too. It's actually kind of throwing me off a bit. I, th I thought it was going to steer a little bit more than that. <laughs> and it didn't. Excuses, excuses, I know. Alright, let's try this again. Get a little bit more angle this time. You can let it go pretty far before you... Crank it on over. Be nice to straighten that out a little bit. Yeah, let's go a little bit more to the right. Now we'll bring it back.
That's not bad. I can live with that. I can live with that. Alright, parking brake on. Let's go ahead and get the windows up. Is that window going up? Yep, that window's going up. Parking lights on only. Get the four ways and the beacon off. And we will turn off the truck. You guys see it in the lower right hand corner? I think you see it. We will go ahead and turn off the truck. Like so. Love that new ignition. Obviously, it's just free right now. I just got it wired a couple days ago. And uh, obviously, don't have any of the dash built. I'm kind of definitely doing this in sections. Uh, but uh, welcome to Idaho Falls. Nice little run of gravel with the uh, Pete 357 from Project 3XX. Thank you, Half Fast Gaming. Uh, as long as the and as well as the uh, the tra the trailer add-on, also on his Patreon from Diesel. And thank you, David Steele, for the cat 3306. Really loved it. Good addition to this game. Uh, let me know if you guys have any comments or questions down below, but that just about wraps it up. Um, if you liked what you saw here, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you can see all my videos. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.